I want to come to you today with a, well, I, I'll give you a couple of uh, testimonies before we start. Should have gave them before the giving. I was out with a, with a pastor who's becoming a friend. We're starting a relationship and God is uh, bringing that relationship together for us. And um, today was confirmed why the, the relationship has begun. And it has to do with evangelism and soul winning. So, you know, Jack and I, we go eat all the time. We're, we're at the gym and we hang out a lot. And, and uh, this week, you know, I've, I've gone to three restaurants. And I just want to thank God that we're able to afford that. Hey, man, listen, I, I'm claiming it. Amen. You know, I, I'm not. Yes. I, I'm, you know, for a long time, I'm like, oh, Lord, we can't afford it. Oh, Lord, we can't. I don't, I don't speak like that anymore. I don't talk like that. Because I'm coming into a, a different, I'm, I'm coming into a different, you know, uh, how, level. <laughs> right? different layer. I'm experiencing a different layer. I'm, a, I'm learning some things. I'm listening to Brother Hagen about faith, you know, and, and I realized, Lord, you know, man, I, I, I got to come up out of this place where I don't have, and, and I'm always, but you know what, and, 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 and I've been speaking for a long time and holding on to my guns because some people have come against me when it comes to, you know, what, what God is wanting to do in my life. You know, close people and people who who don't even care and but have an opinion and which, you know, me very well. I don't care about that either. Right. I care about them, but I don't care about that type of attitude. And so we're able to go out. A lot of times Jack will pay for me because Jack lives in abundance as well. You know, but I'm in a place now that I can pay for Jack. <laughs> But this is this is what this is where, I, where, 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 where this is what the testimony is about. It's about God aligning us and sh showing us favor, right? And, and 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 leading us and guiding us. And, and I don't speak that broke talk no more. So God is showering us. He's showering us. So it's a it's it was light, but now it's starting to get a little heavier. And it's going to get even heavier. I'm going to be drenched in his favor. I'm going to be drenched in his provision, in his victories. I, I claim it and it's going to happen because that's who God is and that's who he wants to be in our lives. So three times we go out to uh, restaurants. Uh, I think probably four maybe this week. And you know what? God has led us to lead four people to the Lord. You know, and it's a beautiful thing because Jesus Christ was born. Right. He was born for the specific reasons, reasons. It's not just one reason. It's not just because of salvation that he came, but that's the biggest reason. And when we begin to live according to the way God wants us, we begin to have a heart. And we, be ha we begin to understand things the way that Jesus understood them. Amen. For to us a child was born. Listen to this scripture. We serve such a good God and, and, and a lot of times we worry. Where are the gifts going to come from this year, you know? Who, who, I don't have enough money for who I want to give to. My kids and my mom and my, and my family and my dad and my friends and my neighbors and you know, there's something about Christmas where we want to give to people we haven't we haven't had a conversation with in, year, in years or months. You know, specifically our neighbors, we want to give them something, you know. We just want to give everybody. There's just something special about Christmas. There's just something beautiful about Christmas. It's my favorite holiday than Thanksgiving. Easter should be one of my favorites, but it's up there. <laughs> But it's one of my favorite, man, because it shows us who God is, God the Father. It's amazing that this, this scripture is spoken, right, about who God is.
For unto us a child is born, the word of God tells us. Isaiah 9. Just for reference, by the way. Let me see if I can find it here. <laughs> for unto us, chapter Isaiah chapter 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is born. This is the, the King James version of, of the Bible. For to us, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Whose son is given? A son is given. That means that he belongs to somebody. That, that he is this child of a father and a child of a mother. Listen closely because this is, this is pretty amazing. Because it, it really shows you who Jesus is. And there are no mistakes in the Bible. If the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. There are no mistakes in the Bible. I don't know what you believe about that. But I believe that there is the divine protection on every word of God. That's why he said, woe to those who add on to the word of God and those who take away from the word of God. There's a divine protection because this is, this is what, what we live by. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. You know, we serve a wonderful, a wonderful Jesus. He's wonderful. I wonder why we worry so much about life. I, I, I wonder, I wonder what, why we, we always try to figure things out on our own. I wonder why we're always trying to make sense of it with our carnal mind, trying to make sense of the situations that, that we live in and, 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 and the end times and, 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 and politics. I wonder why we're always focused on things outside of him. But if he's so wonderful, you know, this is the thing, you know, if he's so wonderful, why are we so worried? Well, because we don't believe that he's wonderful. Amen. You know what wonderful means? He's full of wonders. You know, you know what wonders do? They make you wonder. They make you scratch your head. How did God provide for me all this time? How did God keep me safe from that car accident? Scratch your head. How, how, did, how did God heal me from this disease? How did God set me free? How did I live this long to see this day, to see my grandchildren? Yeah, what? I, you know, like I said, experience, right? I said experience. That's, what, that's where I preach from, experience. Sometimes I don't experience it, but God gives me the experience. Very supernatural thing, by the way. A lot of times I speak, I don't know what I'm saying, and the Holy Spirit is speaking directly to somebody in their situation, right? Words, I wonder how that happened. That was a word of, that was a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. <laughs> I wonder. He's wonderful. He's a counselor. He's a counselor. You know, God tells you what to do before any counselor can tell you what to do. You know the Holy Spirit leads you in what to say and how to treat somebody and how to act and react. Somebody hurt you. How are you supposed to act? Somebody hurt you. What are you supposed to do? He'll reveal that to us. You know the problem is is that we're so focused on the hurt and, and the transaction, right? She just, she just spoke bad about my shoes. Who does she think she is? You know how much these shoes cost me? Wow, she just said that about my hairstyle. Do you know I just got my hair cut? That, that little comment she made about, you know, what I eat. That little comment, she was talking about me being fat. 
She don't, she don't know I lost 10 pounds this last week. You know, we're so focused on the situation. We're looking at the situation. We're, we're thinking about what she said and what she did to offend us. And, but we're not going to God and saying, you know why? Because we're not ready to forgive. We're not ready to deal with the situation. We're not ready to confront it in love. So we tend to go do the things that we know what, how, and when to do. So we take it upon ourselves. And we don't take our counselor's advice. But our God is a counselor. And he tells us, go tell her you love her and give her a hug. Go tell them you love them and give them a hug. Give them a hug. Lord, what are you talking about? Give them a hug. You know, we always get stiff-necked, you know? We get stiff-necked. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it, Lord. We, we forget he's our father. And we, for, we, you know, we, we, we tend to, we tend to want to do it our way. And then we go around that mountain, boy. Go around that mountain. This is, this is what he says. This is, this is what I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about his favor and how to, how to gain his favor in your life. How to have his favor. You know, God, God, God came to us. He came to us. Not only to save us and for salvation. Yeah, that's the greatest and the best. You know, tomorrow's not promised. We're going to heaven, man. But we got to live here on earth. And we got to be victorious here on earth. And the things that are going on around us right now, all this darkness and all these attacks on, 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 our, on our voice, shutting us down, shutting us up, shutting down the doors, and, and it's going to get worse. But we need to figure this thing out right now as believers. We need to figure this thing out right now. Because we all want to live in victory. Listen, the disciples had favor on them wherever they went. You know how much favor they had? They were turning around prison guards. They were supposed, the prison guards were supposed to hold them down and keep them shut up. Government leaders were coming against them. Political leaders, uh, 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 the religious leaders were coming against them. People were beating them and throwing stones and, and whipping them. And they, they had favor. They laughed in the face of it. And they found joy in the midst of the attacks. Listen, we got to get this because it's coming. Boy, we get, we get up in arms and we start, we start crying out and we start getting mad and nervous when our air conditioner goes out. Well, the three Hebrew boys were in the fire. Seven times they were in the fire, seven times higher than anybody else was. And in the midst of them being in the fire, the, you know, Jesus came and, and, and danced with them. See, Jesus doesn't pull us out of the fire. This is what we don't get. Oh, man, we don't get this. We don't get this as Christians. You know why? Because we've become soft. In this American system, this capitalist system, we've become soft. You know what happens? You know, hard times makes hard, raises hard men, makes men hard, strong, like bull. And soft times makes men weak, make them shrivel up. It's a, it's, a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a revolving door. And in America, we've been soft, man. It bothers us to tell people about Jesus Christ in a, 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 in a full restaurant. We don't want to tell people about Jesus Christ because the girl is, is, is working, the man is working. We don't want to tell them because, because, you know, it's more, it's more, you know, relational to talk about who the dolphins beat this week who the Dolphins have been losing to but they've been winning them I think three in a row you know those easy conversations oh you know I'll just I'll just I'll, you know what I'll just do what the Bible says and I'll just be the Bible who where does where does it say that in the Bible they, they'll be the Bible that I read let me rephrase that. They'll, they will be the Bible that, I read, that they read. I will be the Bible that they read. I will be the Bible that they read. Huh? That doesn't say that in the Bible. You know what it says in the Bible? Preach 
the word of God to every creature. Preach the message of the cross. Preach the message of salvation. It's the power is in the name of Jesus. It's not in, it's not in you just hanging out with them. It's not in just you feeding them. That's why, you know, the, we, we have these outreaches in, in America today. And I, listen, I know this from experience. We went to a church in Pennsylvania. They fed over 300 families. So families would come. They'd come couples. They'd come with their kids. They'd come one person. They'd come with four people to get four, you know, bags of groceries. You were, you were there with us? So they, it's every week. Every week they go there and get bags of groceries, not just one. And they have like a little warehouse in the back of the church. And they have a refrigerator that's about, you know, like 20 feet long, 24 feet long, or 50, no, 52 feet long. It's a trailer. You know, and it's refrigerated and full of food. They got food everywhere. Blessed. And they feed people. And that's their outreach. So we go out there because we're there on a crusade. And we lead over 300 people to the Lord. Most of them didn't know it was a church. Now, listen. The, the, so they go through, the, they go through the, the parking lot. It's a beautiful church, by the way. They go through the parking lot. They come around. They come to the other side. Very, very well organized. They all have about three lanes. Three lanes. They go around. And they all get groceries. Do you know week after week after week they have these outreaches and not one person gets to hear the message of the cross? Most of those people don't even go to that church. I'm not knocking the church. What I am saying is that it's time for us to be the church and start going to those places and start preaching the word of God. Don't put it all on the pastor. Don't put it all on the pastor. The pastor has enough to do. His office is the, is the, is the pastor. He gets to preach every Sunday and, and ask, is there anyone here who doesn't know Jesus? Is there anyone here who doesn't? You know, it's our job to preach the word of God out there in the streets and wherever we are. But the, the, the American system has made us so soft that we don't even know that in our churches today. I'm not knocking the church. What I am saying is that if you're called to be an evangelist, you need to start evangelizing in the church you go to. There needs to be a reformation. You know, the evangelist needs to come back into the church. And I think the church is ready to receive the evangelist now. There's five folds. There's five major areas that we need to touch on. One of them, and I say the biggest one, because tomorrow's not promised to anyone, I always say is the most important. I could spend five years, man, you know, raising it and discipling somebody and and I'm ready to do it the rest of my life. But I meet the one person and they're dead tomorrow. How much discipling is going to help them? How much is discipling going to help a person who's going to die in the next day? Salvation is the most important thing. The evangelist in these end times is the most important thing to do right now. And we're all called to be evangelists. Not all of us hold the office of evangelism. But God didn't just come to save us, right? Because we, we do live on. Who, who, who knows, because we receive Jesus, how much our life has been extended. I'll tell you, for me, my life was extended drastically because I stopped doing the stuff that I was doing that was going to get me in trouble. So that, that, that experience I had with God changed my, the whole trajectory of my life. Now I serve him. That's another thing that evangelism does. It reroutes you. It, it takes you from, you know, being in a, in, a, in a dark place to a place of light. He's our counselor. He's wonderful. He's the mighty God. I want you to sit on that for, for a moment. Sit on this. The mighty God, the everlasting Father. I want you to sit on that for a second. 
Because we are talking about the sun, right? We're talking about the sun. Oh, hold on a second, Phil. Hold on, Phil. Wait, 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 wait. How can he be the father and the son? Well, because only God can do that. (laughs) He's two parts. He's the reality of who God is, and he's the real, real, real God who God is in heaven. He is the picture of what we don't see, right? Jesus is the manifestation of who God is because the Bible says God is spirit. But when God is in spirit and he comes into the flesh, he looks like Jesus. He is Jesus. Oh, Phil, what are you? Wow, I can't wrap my head around that. You can't. Because you're thinking of it in carnal, in a, in, in a carnality. You're trying to make sense of it while we're here on earth, living by earthly standards and earth, earthly principles, earthly philosophies, understanding the, 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 you know, the material things. But God doesn't operate where we operate. God is higher. God is greater. God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. The way he operates is a whole lot different. But the more you hang out with him and the more you understand that he wants to shower you with blessings and he wants to shower you with love, you stop thinking on carnality, on the, on, on the, on the carnality methods and, and the levels of carnality and the flesh. You, st- you stop thinking like that. You, uh, you, you, you elevate. You go into a, a, a higher place. Jacob lay, laid his head on the rock and, and, he, and he saw heaven and he experienced heaven. Abraham was on a mountain asking for God, what is the truth? And God came to him. Heaven meets earth and showed him who God was. And he became the father of our faith. He understood, you know what, I serve a God who things are impossible. He, you know, the, the, the impossible things are, are possible. I serve a God where things are impossible here. It's possible with him. There are no limits to God. So he wasn't focused on, on the natural realm. He was focused on the realms of heaven. And when God asked him to, to sacrifice his son, he was willing to do it knowing that God understood and God had the answer and he was directing directing him and he was counseling him and he was teaching him and he submitted to that. And we know that Abraham was a man of power and a man of of great, great finances, great wisdom. He was a, he was he he, uh, he he was he he elevated his his he became a new creature. So Jesus came, right? He came, and he didn't come just for us to sit here and worry about this stuff and worry about the money and, and worry about the bills and worry about the kids. And he didn't come for that. He didn't he didn't come. For us to focus on the natural things, he came for us to focus on him. 